Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. We just give God the honor and the glory. We just bless his holy name as we enter into the midnight hour. Amen. So we just give God the honor. We just give God the praise as we command our day, command our morning, command the midnight hour. We bless God's name. We thank him for what he's getting ready to do in this new teaching. Amen. How to face our problems. Amen. How to find the solution to our problems. Praise God. So tonight, we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit take over. We're going to allow him to minister to us. Amen. To see the opportunities within our problems. We're not going to allow the accuser to continue to accuse us. But we're going to let God have the final say so. We're going to let our Father have all the glory. Amen. So let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our minds. Let's prepare to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you and to your family or wherever you are in this God's world. Amen. Come on. Let's command the midnight hour in Jesus' name. Hi, welcome back to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. Let us get into the teaching, what the Lord has for us. And tonight, we're going to discuss um, from the scriptures. We're going to use two scriptures tonight, Job chapter 1, and we're going to use 1 Samuel chapter 17. Amen. So, Father, over to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that whoever hears the sound of my voice, that they will receive this revelation. They will receive the understanding that they will allow you to be Lord, not just over their life, but Lord over every area of their life. Whoever contends with them, Father God, whoever's re- fighting them, whoever's causing chaos and confusion in their life, you will contend with them also. But if they are not contending with you, How can you contend with their enemies, Father? Amen. How can you contend with their enemies if they are not contending with you? And that's what it's about, you know, spending time with God, committing your time to God, trusting in God, believing in God. Amen. Allowing our Father to be the lover of your soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm currently doing a study, so I'm going to try to mix up the study a little bit, but Just be patient with me and let's hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. We have to learn how to see problems as opportunities. Many of times people, when they see problems, they run from the problem. They start making accusations that God is not in their life. Or they make accusations, the one that I heard today, I'm not doing nothing right. Everything I do is wrong. That is a false accusation. The word of God say, lean not unto your own understanding, but trust in the Lord before your heart, before your heart, before your mind and soul. Amen. Because he will lead you into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So that's why we have to not trust our own human instincts because our carnal thoughts will cause us to have error in thinking. And when we have error in thinking, our behavior reflects what we think. That's why you could tell how much faith a person has. 
Not based upon the words they confess or the songs that they worship or how they can impart scripture when it's time to release a prophetic word. But their lifestyle has to be a life of faith. Not knowing when your next is coming, but you're trusting in God to bring it to you. Amen. So in this story, according to the book of Samuel, Samuel chapter 1, uh, First Samuel chapter 17, there's a story about a young man named David. And during this time period, David was sent out to bring his brothers lunch. And during that time, Goliath, a big, Goliath was a big problem for Israel. And David himself saw Goliath as a big opportunity. So you have the army of Israel, you have King Saul with his captains, his his generals. <laughs> Everybody is looking at this big giant and all they could see is a problem. But here comes this rugged shepherd boy named David <laughs> who comes and he says, oh, this is an opportunity right here. And he goes speaking about all the battles he already has had. So this is just another opportunity for him to kill, uh, kill not just animals, but a giant. Amen. So <laughs> David sees this when he's bringing his food, his, the food to his brothers. His brothers are telling him, you need to get out of here. You ain't got no business here. Go take care of dad's business. Go tend to the sheep. Amen. But at that time, David could hear all the irresponsible comments that Goliath is making about the children of Israel. And David challenged him. He contended with his words. He said, who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine, to speak to the army, to God's army, the army of Israel? I'm paraphrasing it. Amen. He he immediately didn't make the problem become his problem. He He made the problem his opportunity to kill Goliath. And many of times we need to start looking at our problems as an opportunity. And also examine the advice that we get from other people. Because in the book of Psalms 1, it says, you know, be careful who we get counsel from and who we sit with when we receive counsel. Amen. So we have to be careful with who we communicate with and who we listen to. Because a lot of times that is the problem. And when you have the wrong people counseling you in your life, giving you wrong advice, sharing their opinions. Amen. It causes more problems to the problem because God, I was, you know, I never, oh, I never always fought like this, but I now see Abba Father in everything. I mean, I see him in my problems. I see him in everything, but I also see him being the solution to my problems also. Amen. But when you look at uh, the children of Israel, there was allowing this giant called Goliath to slander the nation. And they was taking wrong counsel from a Philistine. Amen. Instead of speaking up and declaring God's word and speaking just like, uh, just like David did. Amen. Instead of doing that, they fell in agreement with the words of that giant because they were afraid to challenge him. But David, King David, the shepherd boy, was not afraid to challenge his problems. Amen. That's the key thing. David was not afraid to challenge his problems. And I'm telling you right now, you need to pray and ask our father to give you the solution to your problems, to show you how to bring resolution to the situation that you may be facing right now. Amen. Your attitude will determine how far you're going to get with your problems in life. But instead, instead of agreeing with the problem, reject the problem by speaking what David said. Who are you to challenge Israel, God's children? He reminded Goliath who they were. And that's what many of you has to do today. You must remind your problems, your enemies, whose child you belong to, who's your father, 
But a child can only say who they belong to when they know who is their father. And I'm not talking about your physical father. I'm speaking about your spiritual father in heaven. The God of Israel. The God who fought many battles and gave his people victory. Amen. Victories. They were always victorious until they stepped out of alignment with God and started agreeing with their problems instead of just speaking the word that God had put in their mouth. I mean, it's really so important for us to be in agreement with God's word. And the word of God says in Psalms 1, I'm just going to add this to what I'm saying about David. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That is a problem. That is a massive problem. Psalms 1 verse 1. Go back and examine that. Be aware of who you take counsel from. Make sure you're getting godly counsel. Make sure you are sitting with the right people, the right counselors, the right teachers, the right people that can assist you and aid you and teach you not to always look at all problems as a problem, but look at it as an opportunity and a solution to the problem. Amen. Whatever the situation is, it's about retraining the way you think. Now, when you go back to the book of Job, Job had many problems. But what I noticed in the book of Job, Job chapter 1, when the servants were kept coming back with bad news, bad news over and over with Job, telling him about his children, telling him about all the land and the animals, the beasts and everything was killed. There was always one that got out of that problem and came back and told him what had happened. But this is what I found to be unique. And and I pray that many of you will pay that attention. And the scripture I'm making reference to is verse 21. Verse 20 to verse 20. Two. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worship. See, when you have a problem, okay, when I have a problem, that's something I generally don't do. But when I sat here and I started studying Job chapter one, I realized That is something we all should do. Even when we have problems. The solution is to worship. That problem is going to give you and me the opportunity to worship God. Amen. And it says, and and, and Joe said, and naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I I return. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And many people has charged God foolishly. Because they're so concerned about what they have lost. They are so full of The possessions of this earth. Realizing or not realizing. You can't take none of that with you. When I moved to Rochester, New York. I couldn't bring nothing with me that I had. I could have put stuff in storage. But no, I sold all what I could sell. And I gave away what I could give away. Amen. And when I came up here, I had nothing. And sometimes when the problems that occurs in my life. The first thing that comes out of my mouth is, I gave up so much to be here. I I, I gave up so much to be here and I I feel like I want to cry, I want to grieve. But tonight, I confess in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive me for, for looking at the problem, for looking at what I gave up. Because everything what I gave up, God has returned it back to me. Double, double, double. Amen. But I don't want to continue to be that person making foolish decisions. 
I don't want to be that person. Come on, walk with me. You don't want to be that person. We don't want to be that person making wrong decisions because of a problem. The, the problems now are opportunities to worship God. Just like Job said, God take, he giveth and he taketh. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Naked I came in this world and naked will I leave. I can't take, I didn't bring nothing in this world and we can't take nothing out of this world. So we pray now and ask God to forgive us for our unrighteousness. We repent now, Father, forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we enter into the midnight hour, Father God, I ask for your mercies upon our lives, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you forgive us, Father God, for allowing possessions to be to be our gods. Forgive us for the idols that we have allowed in our hearts, Father God. Forgive us for the sins that we have committed out of our hearts ignorantly, Father. Have mercy upon us, Father. Cleanse us and wash us with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we enter in to the midnight hour. Oh, yea, God, let us have the attitude of Brother Joe, Father God. Let us fall to the ground and worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord, in spirit. And in truth. Yea God let us be like. King David. Let us not let our enemies. Speak death over us. Let us fall out of agreement. Reject it. Counsel it. Disown it. Renounce it. Divorce it. It's not our portion God. For I will bless the Lord at all times. Yea God. Your praise shall continually be. In our mouths Lord. In our mouth. So Father I thank you for this midnight hour. I thank you for the teaching. And I pray whoever hears my voice. You will understand this teaching. You will understand. It's okay. To have a problem. When there is an opportunity. It's okay. To have a problem. Because you're going to bow down. And you're going to worship God. You're not going to charge God foolishly. No. No. You're not going to fall into the hands of the accuser and say there's something wrong with you. You're not doing nothing right. No. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Let it go back. Go back to the pits where it came from. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the Lord will be your help. I pray he will be your portion. In Jesus name I pray. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King, for Fellow Utterance. Let us enter into the midnight hour. Command our day, command our morning, command the midnight hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, amen.